Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hope you guys are having a good day. I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World and the Black Business School. And uh, I'm going to give you guys time to come into the conversation. And as I do that, I'd like to, for you to know uh, the person that I'm speaking with today uh, is somebody that you're familiar with. If you're not familiar with him, you certainly should be. Uh, his name is Dr. George C. Frazier. And uh, Dr. Frazier, is, uh, he is America's networking guru. Uh, he's a business expert. He's a, he's a, he's a, good, a good human being and a smart brother who's uh, written several books and, uh, and, and it runs the Frazier Net Conference every year, which I will tell you more about in a second. But without further ado, I'd like to welcome uh, my friend, Dr. Frazier. How are you doing today, sir? Hey, man, it's good to be back. And um, you're the only person in the world that I would uh, interrupt my uh, two-week Hilton Head vacation uh, uh, with my uh, uh, four, there's four couples that we've been going to Hilton Head together playing golf uh, with our wives and close friends for uh, nearly 40 years. And so well, this, this happened to fall, this predate that we set happened to fall right near the end of the vacation. But uh, I love talking to you so much. Um, I said, listen, I'm going to do this anyway. So it's good to be back with you, man. And you look great. So I'm, I'm a little casual. I got on my golf, you know, my golf shirt. And uh, as soon as I, as soon as we're finished, um, we're going to go play some golf. So, yeah. All right. Well, that, sound, that sounds good. And I appreciate you taking that time to come talk to us uh, during your vacation. And uh, and so um, uh, everybody who's watching, I hope you'll hit the thumbs up button, share and subscribe and everything else. I see Kenny and Tamara's in here and uh, uh, PM uh, and Arise and Lauren and uh, some others. Uh, shout out your city. Shout out the city that you're from. We always like to hear what city that you're coming from. Uh, and uh, Ty Goro is already saying thank you guys for this class lesson. And you know, school will be in session when Dr. Frazier starts speaking. Uh, and so, uh, so let, let's let's jump into it. So, Dr. Frazier, I'm I'm gonna give you the background. I, I love the fact I love the fact that when I mentioned the Popeyes chicken uh, debacle, you you didn't really know what I was talking about. That tells me you've got the you got laser focus, man. <laughs> laser focus. Uh, does anybody, everybody in the chat, yes or no, yes or no, are you familiar with the chaos that's been going on with Popeye's Chicken this week? Uh, if, you, if you are, then say yes. Uh, if you're not, then say no, because I'm going to give you a quick backstory of what's going on. Uh, well, Dr. Frazier, uh, we've been talking about Popeye's Chicken quite a bit on this channel uh, because uh, this week Popeye's uh, released their new chicken sandwich. And so what happened was they, uh, we, I, I noticed that they were using Ebonics on Twitter uh, a sort of Twitter beefing back and forth, going back and forth on Twitter with Wendy's and 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 uh, and, and Chick Fil A and uh, and another place that has a chicken sandwich. I can't remove. No, I, I've seen those. I've seen those. Oh, I've you seen, seen the that. Okay. Yeah, all right, right. Yeah, right. And so, I know uh, controversy. Yeah, and so there was it was all this chaos. So Negroes were back flipping and climbing through windows and lining up out the door, around the corner, down the block to try this Popeyes chicken sandwich. In fact. Popeye's actually, uh, the experts estimated that black people alone on the first day gave Popeye's chicken $23 million in free advertising uh, just by talking about this sandwich so much and hyping it up so much. Now, what a lot of our people kind of were concerned about is, you know, this idea that, are, are you saying that the only time black folks can come together and unify <laughs> Is over a white man's chicken sandwich. Is, 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 that's the only time. That's the only time we could get it together and have some black unity up in this piece. And, and also, here's the other piece of it. And I'd like to get your thoughts on. So I'm not even going to frame it as a question, but because I know you're a smart man, I know that you understand the the power of unity and how that power can be used to accomplish so many things. Uh, but you know, but the other piece is that a lot of people said, "Wait a minute, there are a thousand black-owned businesses out here that make chicken better than Popeyes. You know, or at least as good." Uh, and, and the, but they don't get that same hype, that same attention. And so, in fact, if you guys know of a Black-owned business that makes chicken better than Popeye's, shout them out in the chat so they can get the, the PR, free PR from us. Uh, so, Dr. Frazier, what are your thoughts on that phenomenon in terms of us, uh, you know, the times we show the unity, it might be something like this or maybe going to see a, a new Disney movie or, you know, you have the Patty's Pies situation where that became the, all the rage, but Walmart was making all the money. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Dr. Frazier, based on your perspective as a black businessman? Well, when I when I hear things like that, or see, and I saw those commercials, by the way, uh, and, and they were pretty smart. And um, I, I try to take away well, what, what what do we learn from that? I mean, how does a Popeye's chicken get twenty three million additional impressions? Um, 
running short commercials with black folks eating chicken. And you're right, if we wanted to rate Popeye's chicken versus black folk making chicken, even commercially, it wouldn't even be a third or fourth. So the question is, if I was making chicken, if I was a brother making chicken and I had a store and I had a, a small franchise in the city, I would try to take away what was the strategy around that to create the, in quote, controversy. And how can I apply that marketing strategy to something that I'm making or doing? Because it was all done on social media. In other words, it probably did not cost them a whole heck of a lot of money. It was not a lot of television, high, high price television commercials associated with that particular strategy. Um, but, you know, black, black people, we don't get it uh, when it comes to business, right? In terms of how really to pique people's imagination to do things that bring value added benefit to the product or service that we are promoting. Um, to create the kind of viralness, the kind of high impression uh, that's necessary to break through the clutter, uh, to have people focus on your chicken, right? When you think about all the people making chicken, what, what would it take? And it took black people, in a sense, sword fighting with toothpicks, right, over a piece of chicken to rile up black folks, to get black folks competing with each other and to create 23 million impressions. I don't, I, I, would, I would be interested to know what was the incremental business during that period of time for Popeyes during this controversial uh, display? Um, what did we learn from that? And what can we do? How can we apply that to our businesses? How do we use social media better? And how do we use, if, if, if our products and services, if you're producing a product or service that in fact has a high level of interest to black people, what can you do that is morally grounded and right uh, to, 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 to advance your business? I mean, it, it, it never ceases to amaze me, the stuff I see on television that goes viral, that results in increase incremental business. Uh, we are always at the butt of that. We're always the consumers. We are the consumption class. They are the merchant class. So what they show us is consuming, right? Not doing something that's building our business and selling stuff to our people in a good and righteous way. So how do we move from the consumption class, which is highlighted and used to promote a brand, and get incremental business to show us as a merchant class that is in fact effectively communicating with our customers, our audiences, our business niche to in fact increase our business. How do we do that? What can we learn from that? What were the lessons that we extract from that very, very unusual um, promotion, because it was a promotion. Somebody thought about that. Somebody planned that, right? That didn't just happen accidentally. Someone said, if you did this, this way, and you created a lot of different Black people commenting on this new chicken sandwich, and you had competitors, you were comparing it to competitors, you're going to get this response, you're going to get this many new impressions, and you're going to, and that's going to increase your business by XX. What do we learn from that? That's, that, is, that is really my takeaway. When I hear what the controversy was, what did we learn and how can we apply it? Uh, everybody, I was speaking with Dr. George C. Frazier. Um, he is the annual host of the Power Networking Conference. Um, I want you guys to know his website. Uh, your website is at powernetworkingconference.com? That's right, powernetworkingconference.com. That's right, powernetworkingconference.com. And, and what is the title of your book, sir? Well, I have six books, but the main book, the Bible, is uh, for us, uh, for networking, is Success Runs in Our Race, The Complete Guide to Effective Networking in the African-American Community, and Click, 10 Truths for Building Extraordinary Relationships. Those are the two seminal books that uh, have been written. Or Success Runs in Our Race was written 25 years ago. It still sells uh, 40,000 copies every year. 
25 years later. So it's, a, it's required reading in 57 historically by colleges. So it's a book mm -hmm. that started the networking con uh, conversation and ultimately started the networking movement uh, some 25 years ago. Wow, I love that. So, um, <clears throat> and I, I know I've got copies of both of those books and everybody should check that book out <clears throat> or actually all of Dr. Frazier's books are great. Um, success Dr. Watkins, let me, let, me, let me ask you a question. What is your take? What is your takeaway on that controversy? How, how can we use that? I mean, this is what you teach. This is what you do. This is what we study at. This is what we town hall meeting about <laughs> at the Power Networking Conference, right? We take in information, right? And then what do we do with it? Well, how do we use it to advance our people, whether it's negative, whether it's positive, what are the lessons that, that we extract from it, and how do we apply those lessons to move us forward? What was, what's your thinking on that? The, the we need to love, love ourselves, you know, love ourselves economically. Um, you know, if you look at the three biggest phenomenon <clears throat> uh, online in terms of something going viral and somebody making, you know, $100 million out of the Black community or more, the three things I think about are one, uh, there was a situation with Patty's Pies where, uh, you know, a big guy who probably shouldn't be eating sweet potato pie on a regular basis uh, eats a pie and and <clears throat> he doesn't just say, oh, that was a good pie. He is dancing the jig and singing, woo, Lord Jesus, you know, just, you know, just kind of, you know, uh, you know, quite frankly, cooning out a little bit. And everybody loves that. They, they love to see black people kind of do the song and dance thing. And it goes viral. Next thing you know, Walmart literally announces they have to order 2 million pounds of sweet potatoes because that's what they need to keep up with the pies. Second is the release of the movie, The Black Panther, released by Disney, another major corporation as big as Walmart. They put out The Black Panther. We internalized it uh, as if it was ours, even though it wasn't. Right. And, uh, and we send the sales through the roof. You know, the, we, we probably put about $700 million into the pockets of Disney uh, in that particular episode. And then you've got... Uh, Popeye's chicken situation where Popeye's um, has sold so much chicken that their employees, so there are employees threatening to quit because they said, I cannot make that many chicken sandwiches in a day. You know, one guy said, I made 600 chicken sandwiches today. I can't make any more. Stores everywhere are sold out and people are fighting to get a hold of this chicken sandwich. Now, I'm trying to figure out for black people, this is a question I try to ask black folks. What does it take to get you? to love yourselves and to love each other and to love your own businesses as much as you love that damn chicken sandwich. <laughs> That's it. Like, what does it take? At what point, you know, do, do black people, does a black business get to you know, experience the love that we're bestowing upon uh, restaurant brands international that owns Popeye's, which is a Canadian company that isn't going to replace any of those dollars that they are sucking out of your neighborhoods. You, you mean you can't find a chicken place anywhere? that can make chicken as good as Popeye's? You yeah. know, I, I know chicken places, Dr. Frazier, I'm sure you do too. I know black owned restaurants that employ black people that keep money in black neighborhoods that circulate black dollars that make better chicken than Popeye's and we don't give them half the attention that we gave, right. uh, you know, Restaurant Brands International, the Canadian company that is never gonna even bring that money back to the United States, let alone to a black neighborhood. And so I think that this, honestly, Dr. Frazier, and I'm, I'm gonna be quiet because this is your, you, you're supposed to be talking. But I like this, no, 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 this, this, this you're, we're teaching here, we're teaching, go ahead. Yeah, but, but this, it, it actually burns me up a little bit. It makes me angry because you know what? This weekend when I was down in Atlanta, I, I decided to go do a little pilgrimage. I'm training for a marathon and we had to run 12 miles that day. So I did a pilgrimage and I looked up on the map where my grandmother's grave site was. And I decided to run six miles to my grandmother's grave site. I happened to have to run right through West Atlanta. And I didn't know West Atlanta was the hood. I, I, I was just trying to get to my grandmother's. And I, I'm running through it. I'm seeing people that are like, hey, Dr. Boyce. And, and one guy's like, you, you're running through the hood today. Huh? What, what you, you really do run through the hood. I'm like, yeah, I, I didn't know that, but OK. You know? <laughs> and, and, and you know what I'm seeing, Dr. Frazier? I'm seeing abandoned buildings. I'm seeing grocery stores that, that, that are torn to pieces. I'm seeing uh, brothers, you know, uh, which represent a, a probably a trillion dollar labor force that's untapped, just standing around doing nothing. Only time I saw people who weren't black were the people who were coming into that neighborhood to make money on construction projects where they don't hire black people, right? right? And across the street, there's a group of black men standing around doing nothing. On the other side, there's a group of non-black men who are making money in our neighborhoods, constructing things. And I'm literally running through and thinking, who's thinking about these neighborhoods and these poor people? 
Like who, who's thinking, who's making investments, real meaningful investments in these neighborhoods that are circulating dollars. And I just don't believe it's happening. So, you know, but, but then I thought about it and I said to uh, Alicia, Alicia is my significant other, the black woman I love. I said to her, I said, I bet you though, as poor as this neighborhood is, if they put a Popeye's chicken in this neighborhood, oh. there will be a line out the door, around the corner, down the block to get in here, to get a hold of this chicken. Right. I but, just say at the end of the day, what, what, what is wrong with us? Yeah. Well, let me, yeah. There are a couple of things that let's unpack that. That's very, very important what you said. Um, there are two addictions that black people have that have been enculturated in us that has that have a significant impact on what you just said and a significant impact on uh, that whole Popeye phenomenon. The first addiction is we are addicted to instant gratification versus delayed gratification, right? As I like to say when I speak, the goal is to win, not to look like we're winning. I would rather carry a plastic bag with $5,000 in it than to carry a $5,000 Louis Vuitton bag with $100 in it, right? That's looking like you're winning. That's instant gratification. That's showcasing. That's pretending that you, you have something that you are something. We're addicted to instant gratification versus delayed gratification. Um, we must fix that. There are ways to do that. We talk about that in workshops. In fact, if you think about it, our whole darn 96-hour, four-day conference is on how to deal with instant gratification versus delayed gratification and what, what, what the power of delayed gratification and how that works. All right. That's A. B, the second addiction we have, which I think is directly related to the Popeye phenomenon, um, is <clears throat> it came out in the result of an AC Nielsen study about three years ago on the television viewing habits by cultural group. And what they found is that African Americans consume 40% more television than anybody on earth. We watch on average 72 hours of television a week. That's 10 hours of television a day. Any Negro watching 10 hours of television a day needs their ass kicked. That's A. B, when you're watching 10 hours of television a day, Dr. Watkins, you are subjected to almost a thousand commercials. And a thousand commercials a day, 10 hours, uh, seven days a week, turns you into a consumption machine. What is the stuff that we get on television? What is it called? It's called programming. We are programmed to consume and to respond to that kind of stuff that we see on television that catches our eye. Right. So this Popeye commercial went viral. Twenty three million impressions from a damn chicken sandwich. And as you said, they had lines around the block at Popeye's. That is principally because we're consuming the, the, the whole television thing. We, we are we are our, our minds have been made into consumption machines. That's why we are the consump we are the uh, the consumption class in America. Black people, they are the merchant class. They make stuff, we buy stuff, and that is that is precipitated by um, our addiction to the instruments that program us, namely television. Now we're consuming a lot of social media too. You know, we consume more social media, right? We do more talking. We spend more money uh, with AT&T and Verizon per capita of any cultural group in this country. So we, we are oral, visual, tactile, kinesthetic, and auditory learners, right? So this machine that sits in front of us, this thing called television has programmed us to consume. Right. So the question is, what do we do about that? Well, we try to wean, first we try to wean ourselves off of television. We need to instead of watching 10 hours of television a day, uh, this year the goal may be 
eight hours. Next year, the goal may be six hours. The year after that, the goal may be four hours, but it is impacting us. It's infecting, affecting, and effecting our behavior. And that's why a Popeyes can put together a catchy little video with black folk acting the fool, eating chicken sandwiches, wooing and wan and cooning, as you said. I mean, that's just, that's said, that gets over. And they build their business. That's, and, and so that's something we have to man up to. We're addicted to instant gratification versus delayed gratification. And we're addicted to television consuming 72 hours of this stuff a week that impacted, that impacts our consumption behavior. We must fix that. Mm. And when you throw in an addiction to uh, greedy, greasy, fatty, sugary food, <laughs> you got to try. Uh, it's cultural. <laughs> it's cultural. Yeah. Well, I'm addicted to that. Well, that's cultural. It's <laughs> yeah. cultivated in us, right? Now, yeah. that, there's a whole slave history to that. Yeah. Right? So, um, uh, the, the foods that, w- that we were allowed to have and eat were those foods that they fundamentally didn't want. In fact, you know, here's an interesting factoid. People want to know, Dr. Fraser, what is the history of Black people always being late at most things? This is a very simple history. It's a cultural history. We were late or have a history of being late because we were the last to allow to eat. We ate approximately a half hour to one hour after white folks ate because we were serving them. So we never came early to dinner because we were always the last to eat. And so that formed habits of just being late because we're not going to be served first. And so we just came late and we came at the time that we would be served, which is late. So these are things that are enculturated in us. These are some badass habits that we need to fix in the 21st century. But we, you know, a, if you know anything about AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, um, I think they have the most, in the 12-step program, uh, one of the, the, the first step is the most important step, and it's a step that we must take. Um, and the step is, if you're, if you're ever going to become sober, you must first admit that you're a drunk, right? In other words, you must first recognize that you have a problem. Admit that you have a problem. Mm. Right. We're addicted to instant gratification versus delayed gratification. And we're addicted to consuming television. Those are two very powerful addictions that feed our, that feeds the bad habits that we have. So yeah. now we recognize that. And yeah. now we can take small and, and simple steps to overcoming that. And these are the things that we practice, that we talk about. And don't think that you could talk about it and say it one time. No, no, no. The key to learning is simplicity and repetition. You've got to say it 50 different ways on 50 different days. Right? And you've got to keep saying it and saying it and saying it. I've been saying to Black people for 40 years, we must connect the dots. We must leverage more effectively our collective resources and intellectual capital. And if you looked at, if you went on YouTube and looked at a speech that I gave 20 years ago, it's the same damn speech I've been giving for the last 40 years. Now, I may say it a little bit differently and I've added some, you know, some hot sauce to it and added different story, but in essence, it's the same thing. So we have, you have to keep, Dr. Boyce, you have to keep repeating what you're saying. A, because it's right. B, because this is how we learn. How do I know this? My mom had to tell me 50 times to take out the garbage, right? Georgie boy, take out the garbage. Yes, mama, right? Then the next day, Georgie boy, didn't I tell you to take out the garbage? About 50 times I took out the garbage, right? No, you didn't have to tell me anymore. It's the same thing, right? This is how we learn. You keep doing what you're doing, keep saying what you're saying, and don't hesitate to repeat it Mm. over and over and over until we get it. Well, everybody who just tuned in, I'm speaking with George C. George C. Frazier. Uh, Dr. Frazier is the author of the books uh, Success <laughs> Runs in Our Race and also Click, 10 Truths for Building Extraordinary Relationships. Uh, he's known as America's Networking Guru. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's doing us the honor of joining us here today. Uh, also, um, his uh, website for the Power Networking Conference is powernetworkingconference.com. Uh, everybody who's watching, please hit the thumbs up button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button. Also, don't forget that if you want to uh, try out, if you want to learn about wealth and educate the family and all these things, 
uh, give the Black Business School a try. That's theblackbusinessschool.com. T H E. That's theblackbusinessschool.com. Also, George, Dr. Frazier is going to join us at the All Black National Convention in Houston, which you can find out more at allblacknationalconvention.com. That's allblacknationalconvention.com. Thank you, by the way. I'm, I, I'm honored that you're going to join us. And, and so I, I want to um, go into, you, you said so many interesting things. I literally took notes as you were talking. And I was thinking about this. Here's what I, here's what I wanted to, I want to, I want to lay out there, you know, and, uh, and get your take on it. I'm not even going to uh, answer or ask it in a question form. I'm just going to show you some things and share some things and, and get your perspective on this. Uh, first thing is, look, uh, everybody who's listening, I want to make sure it's clear. Um, I'm not going to shame you or attack you if I see you walking down the street with a Popeye's chicken sandwich in your hands. I'm not going. I'm not going to call you a sellout. I'm not like that. Even though the only sellouts in the in the whole equation is Popeye's chicken because they sold out of their chicken. So the, if anybody's a sellout, it's Restaurant Brands International because they're dancing the jig because they sold out of chicken and have no more chicken left. And we just basically put their their children through college and gave them trust funds and and mansions and 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 portfolio added to their portfolios, right? So this just be clear. You just saw about a hundred million dollars just scooped up out of the black community. So if you ever wonder where the disappearing black wealth is going, uh, you know, just go and 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 check the local Popeyes because a bunch of it's over there. But with that said, but also also Dr. Boyce, Popeye owes us. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Where I've seen of all the events that I speak at, all the events that you do, all the big national events with Black, I don't know if I've ever seen Popeye's Chicken as a sponsor, mm. right? As a sponsor, right? What is the return on that investment for you, those of you out here producing events, right? Uh, how many Popeye's Chicken franchises are there even in the local area or the regional area? They probably have a group of Popeye's chicken owners, and have you gone to them and said, would you like to sponsor this conference that talks about economic development and wealth creation, right? So why not? I mean, they owe us, right? We are a significant part of their business. How do we extract that? We get them to support, underwrite, uh, provide scholarships for uh, uh, the things that we're doing. Don't be ashamed to ask. I mean, we're giving to them big time, right? Where are they giving to us big time? We need to look at this. We probably ought to Google this. Where are the sponsorship dollars going that Popeye's Chicken uh, provides each year? I hope they're sponsoring things. Who are they sponsoring? Are they sponsoring the NAACP? Are they sponsoring the Urban League? Are they sponsoring the National Black NBA? Are they sponsoring your conference? Are they sponsoring my conference? No, I've been, you know, I've been getting sponsors for 20 years of my conference, right? Popeye's chickens had never raised his hand to be a sponsor. So <laughs> that is some pressure that we can put on them to give back. Now it's just a pittance of what they have gotten, but it, it beats a sharp yeah. stick in the eye. So for those of you producing events, living in these urban centers where, where there are tremendous numbers of Popeye chickens, you should be going to the local Popeye's chicken group. Um, they're organized just like the McDonald's groups are organized locally. The Burger King groups are all uh, organized locally. And I've gotten sponsorship dollars for years from McDonald's, from their groups, and from Burger King, from their groups, Wendy's, from their groups, Get some sponsorship dollars. This is a perfect example. This, this, this conversation, this controversy is a perfect example to pivot on and to get some investment back into the things that you're doing in our community. Well, I like that a lot. Um, I like that a whole lot. And I think that uh, all of you, uh, everybody type the term black tax, black tax. That's what, that's what we call it right here, Dr. Frazier, the black tax. Anybody who's extracting wealth from the black community should be asked to pay the black tax. Um, that goes for, for the restaurants. It goes for the rappers. Um, you know, the rapper Drake is in Canada also like Popeye's is. And, and he, he built, he, he bought this $187 million jet. And, he, and one thing he said in his statement was, uh, I'm very happy to support Canadian businesses. And I said, wait a minute, you, you, you made all this money from hip hop. Hip hop is not an art form that originated in Canada. Hip hop originated in the South Bronx in the United States, in the in the hood. That's where your dollars should be going. So what have you and I wasn't trying to be mean about it, but I just said, you know, what one hundred eighty seven million dollar investment have you made in black neighborhoods from whom you got so much? 
you know, and so I, I think that that's a fair thing to ask for. I think every other every other community does that. You know, I that's right. I can't go make, you know, 100 million off the Asian community and not expect somebody to come knock in my door. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, people shouldn't be allowed to do that in your case. So everybody type black tax in the chat. Maybe use that as a hashtag black tax. Also, shout out a black owned business that has chicken better than Popeye's. The hashtag we're using is better than Popeye's and give them some love, too. Maybe if you see a lot of people lined up at Popeye's. Go take flyers from your, the, the the local chicken places and hand them out to people in line and have them do a taste test or something. Good idea. Yeah, good yeah. Idea. That's a good I, idea. I, I agree. You know, I th- and I think, Dr. Frazier, I think that, you know, the way we can approach this is to not so much kill the momentum of people that want to go enjoy a chicken sandwich, right? I don't want to be a party pooper. If people love chicken, they love chicken. Um, I think that the thing I just want to ask people, and I'd like to get your, your thoughts on this, and then I'll let you get the last word, sir, before you, because uh, I know you want to get back to your vacation, but... You know, I, I think I just I'm asking black people, just make sure that we love ourselves as much as we love everybody else. You know, love your, your brother as much as you love uh, your adversary, love or, or, or whoever your competitor, uh, love your family as much as you love everyone else. And so what I would even ask people is, is something very basic. You know, um, we have something that, that I put together to show people how to invest. I called it the five dollar a day investment plan. Mm. We can invest for the amount of the, the Popeye's chicken sandwich will cost you. You can actually have a consistent stock portfolio that will grow into a substantial amount of wealth for your kids in the next 20 to 30 years. Uh, You know, invest just whatever you spend at these fast food restaurants. Just give yourself a matching funds program. Never put more into nonsense than you put into dollars and cents. Mm -hmm. You know, never put more into other people's stuff than you put into your own stuff. Never give more love to the other to the outsiders mm-hmm. than you give to your own family and your own future generations. Mm-hmm. So uh, so get, you know, get one of those investment apps. If you don't know how to invest, we have a free training on how to get started investing in 20 minutes. Go to blackmoney100.com. That's blackmoney100.com. Learn how to invest. And whatever you spend on frivolous things, match that by putting that same amount of your portfolio. That's all that I ask. So, Dr. Frazier, um, I'll let you get the last word. I don't even have a question, but I'd like to see what, what your take is on, on just all of this in terms of how we can f- sort of flip this energy. And, and instead of, you know, me sounding, sometimes I end up sounding like a hater because I, I, I just go so hard about it. I get so passionate. I don't want to be a hater. I want to be a motivator and a supporter. Uh, what, what, can you, what can we say together that will help people take this and turn this into something good and black and strong and powerful? What are your thoughts? Um, two things. And I'll do it in, in something I say all the time when I say, um, you don't need <laughs> any more friends, brothers and sisters. You need business partners. That's what you need. You don't want to hang spending money. You want to hang making money. And then you have to have friends around you who think like that. We, you know, That's what you have to do. Introduce me to your five closest friends, and that will tell me who you are. Right. If you hang in with five broke people, very shortly you're going to be the sixth broke person. So you just have to pick your friends and they have to share your vision and they have to want what you want. Um, And you can't be all things to to, to all people. Uh, And I, I don't know if I mentioned this on the program the last time I was on, but after 40 years of serving black people, studying our people, reading a hundred books a year, 2000 speeches, eight and a half million frequent flyer miles. Um, I've come up with a new formula for black people. And I say this out of love and sincerity. And I use this formula for the people that I target for the Power Networking Conference in Fraser Nation. Because anytime you're producing a product for everybody, you're producing a product for nobody, right? You cannot please everybody, right? So my new formula for Black people is what I call my 85-10-4-1 rule. 85-10-4-1 rule. Now, I want to say this and still be loved. This is just 40 years of service and observation 75, nearly 75 years old, this is what I've concluded. That 85% of black people are sleepwalking through life. 10% are pimping the sleepwalkers. 4% have pulled themselves out of that dark sunken place and are ready to see the light. And 1% 
are the light. And they're ready to help the other 4% get woke. So let's do the math on that. There are 46 million black people in America. 4% are ready to see the light. 1.7 million. 1% are the light, like you, Dr. Watkins. You are the light, right? They're ready to help the other 4% get woke. This is what you do every day. This is what I do every day. That's 500,000 or 400,000 and change. So basically the ones that I'm focusing the balance of my life on, right? And at 75, I don't know how much life I have left, but now it's time to get sharply focused are the conscious and those that want to help the conscious get woke. Okay, that's 2.2 to 2.3 million. Those are the ones that Fraser Nation is focused on. Those are the ones that Power Networking Conference is focused on. These are the ones that we will help them get to where they need to be and to maximize their full human potential. And then we will teach them that they must reach down and lift up and reach back and pull forward. And most importantly, they must learn, earn, and return. That's what it's about. That's what the nation is about. You must learn, you must earn, and you must return, right? we got a lot of us learning, a lot of us earning, but not enough of us returning. If more of us returned, this would be an entirely different conversation, right? So I'm going to put my time, talent, and treasure, right? And invest in that 2.2 to 2.3 million that have the highest potential. No, I'm not ignoring those who are struggling, right? Uh, to, uh, with a hand up and struggling for someone to grab that hand. Well, I am going to work on those who need to get there, right? Who have the best chances of getting there and are ready, willing, and able to help those whose hands are up, right? Uh, as you heard me say at the Power Networking Conference, we are no longer in the age of persuasion. We are now in the age of unification and mobilization. I'm not going to spend 10 minutes of my life trying to convince you that I'm right. Either you see it or you don't see it, right? You are the ones that I want to help, right? Those You are the most likely and the easiest to help because you see it as we see it. You want what we want. You share in a common vision, right? So we, we can really help you. And then we have to, again, I keep saying it, we have to teach those who are there to reach down and lift up and to reach back and pull forward. That's the focus and concentration of my life for, and to, for as much life as God gives me after 75 years. This is the Power Networking Conference. Now, you see who's on the new flyer? Huh? Oh, wait, I, I think I recognize a couple people on there. Okay, all right. All right. All right. So, Believe it or not, the conference has only been over for 30 days. The entire conference for 2020 has already been planned, right? We do it a year in advance because the people we bring to this conference are the best and the brightest. You got to get on their calendar a year in advance. The powerful conference, you yes. need to be there. Uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins will be one of our featured. In fact, I'm doing an interview. I think I told you the last time. Yes. Uh, you're going to get the stage uh, uh, next year. I'm going to do a personal interview with you. And you're going to have a workshop to talk about the Black Business School. Uh, and we are going to encourage uh, the thousand or more people that come to our conference to, to look at your, uh, your, 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 your uh, web-based institution and find a service and find an educational or a package or program because you've got you cover the gamut and think i mean it's so beautifully done it really is and yeah. fairly priced too so it's, it's amazing uh the quality of work that you do uh, for the price that you charge and so our goal is to have at least 
25% of the people who attend the conference um, go to the Black Business School and extend their relationship with Dr. Boyce Watkins after the conference is over, because that's when the real work is done. So uh, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I'm really excited about it. Uh, we've got mm -hmm. a hell of a conference next year. Uh, you're going to be a part of that. And uh, we're looking for, you know, as many people to come as possible. Yeah, well, well I, first of all, I'm honored to be invited. So thank you very much. And, um, and I've gone to the, uh, the Fraser Net Conference uh, twice. Or Fraser Nation Conference now, I guess. It, it, is that the appropriate term? Fraser Nation Conference or Fraser? No, no. It's going to be, we're still going to be the Power Networking Conference. Power Networking okay. Conference. That's right. It's going to be produced, which is produced by the, the operating company's Fraser Net. Got it. Okay. Right? Thank, you. Thank you for clearing right. that up. That's the operating company. Because we believe in making a profit and making a difference and do well while doing good. People have asked me many times, Dr. Fraser, why is this a nonprofit? No, it's not a not for profit, right? We have to make a profit to make a difference, to do well while doing good. We have to relieve our people from this idea that all good information is free. It is not free, right? There's only so far you're going to get uh, in life on free information. The really good stuff you have to invest. You have to pay for it, right? Mm -hmm. So then you create it so that you make a profit and then you return those profits back into the community to improve the condition of our people. That's how you do it. And that's why we do it that way. Well, you know, I agree with you 100%. I mean, you know, and I, and I, and I, I think people get this and, and I like to explain it so people understand. Um, I mean, first of all, you're right. I mean, with the Black Business School, um, you know, we created that because I saw that people were being saddled with so much debt in college that they could never repay it. Half of all black college graduates uh, default on their student loan debt because it's just so much. And uh, and I said, you know, we could give them 10 times more for one one hundredth of the cost. Right. right. And, you know, yeah. I mean, in fact, um, in fact, only 20 percent of our students in the black business school have paid us more than ten dollars. You know, it, it, literally most of the eight, eight, you know, 70, 80 percent of our students have paid close to nothing uh, or very or very or a few hundred bucks, you know, and uh, we're able to operate. We're able to pay our faculty and get the job done. And uh, to me, I think that's the future of education because, you know, I, the, the same professors that you pay all that money for at these universities, I went to school with those guys. The difference is that they probably didn't go to, they didn't learn from people that were as good as the people I learned from. And also, uh, they don't care about you the way we care about you. You know, we're, we exist for one reason, and that is to uh, solve black wealth related problems. Period. We are the best in the world at this. That's all we specialize on. We don't care about anything or anybody else, you know. And and so when you compare that to say going to, you know, you you spent two hundred thousand dollars going to the University of North Dakota or something or wherever Iowa State. Well, they, they they don't care much about any any problems in the black community. They can't solve those problems in the black community. They're going to charge you an insane amount of money, and it, it's so that you can go to those campuses and be treated disrespectfully. And then on top of that, they're only teaching you how to go get a job working for someone outside your community, which is the last thing that our folks need. Even if you work for someone else, you mm -hmm. need to be prepared to go work for yourself or work with other people in your community. Because I can't tell you how many, and you know what I'm talking about, I can't tell you yeah. how many so-called successful black people that have all these degrees and credentials who hate their lives, who feel like high paid slaves. You know, and I don't want you to feel high paid. Slave. I, I want you to be high paid and free. <laughs> Not right. High paid right. Right. So, uh, right. so thank, thank you for uh, those kind words, and um, you know, and I and I love it. I, I just so you guys know publicly, I support Fraser Nation. Um, I think you guys should look into it. Uh, also, the Power Networking Conference. I'm honored to be there. Uh, I'd love to see you all there. Uh, also, Dr. Fraser is going to be at the All Black National Convention next month. AllBlackNationalConvention.com, and I want to give you guys the websites and also the names of his books so you can look them up. Uh, you guys, you 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 all hear how how much um how highly I speak of Dr. Claude Anderson. Well, Dr. Frazier is the only other person I brought in where I've really uh, promoted his content in this way uh, because you guys know I don't promote something if I don't believe in it. And uh, and I can tell you, if you have your children read Success Runs in Our Race, they will be better people. They will be more successful uh, because of it. Why? Well, because one of the reasons that your businesses don't succeed and your economies don't work is because we have to learn how to have healthy relationships with each other. We have to learn how to lift each other up instead of tearing each other down. We can't be crabs in a barrel. We have to break out of the barrel and stop being crabs. And his books are really good at helping you understand that. Right. Uh, and, and, uh, and I can talk about that all day. Maybe next time we come in, we can break some of that down. We should. We should. 
Let me let me just say one final thing with the last couple of minutes that we have. I, I love the fact that you continually promote the whole idea of loving ourselves. Mm-hmm. Because that's where it all begins. There's just no question about that. You see, when I look in the mirror, if I do not love what I see, right? Uh, when I look at you, there's no way that I could love you, right? Because you become a reflection of me. That's called low race esteem. That's driven by low self esteem. And we have low race esteem. And we must fix that. So the question then becomes, because it's such a powerful thing you continually say, loving ourselves. How do we do that? And it's not complicated. Don't make it complicated, brothers and sisters. Simply understand who you are. And there are movies. There, It's all over YouTube. Uh, there are books on who we really are. Understand that you are the children of the slave that would not die. That you have the genetic encoding of the great kings and queens of Africa, that we were building pyramids and solving complex engineering problems when other cultures are living in caves, eating each other. This is the truth. And if everything happens for a reason and serves us in some special way, and we will never understand that reason looking forward, we'll only understand it looking backwards. If in fact that is the truth, and it is the truth because God works in mysterious ways, if that is the truth, Maybe we were not brought here. Maybe we were sent here. Do you believe that God would put his weakest people here to do his toughest job? I don't think so. How could an America who could morally, spiritually, and biblically justify the kidnapping, raping, and pillaging of another two people, natives already in America, and Africans brought to America, have any moral or spiritual grounding? And perhaps had God not sent Africans here, America might have self-destructed by now. We are the moral and spiritual grounding and roots of this country. We are the mothers and fathers of humankind. We are an awesome and powerful and beautiful people with enormous potential that we have not even begun, begin to maximize. That's who we are. That's where the love comes from. And this is not hype. This is science. This is archeological, biological truth. So it's easy to love yourself when you know who you are. And all the records are there. All the books are there. The Black Panther was the first movie that gave us some sense of what and who we really are were and are. So I praise you for that. I I love you for saying that because that's really what it's about. Once we begin to feel what you are talking about and begin to understand that and to have the confidence uh, of, of our convictions and the DNA that God has implanted in us, we will show America that we are a force to be reckoned with. Now, they understand that actually better than we do. This is why most of what talked about our greatness, the evidence of our greatness was either stolen, destroyed, or distorted. Don't you understand that by now, brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. So it's all there, right? It's in Dr. Watkins. It's in Randall Pinkett. It's in all of the brothers and sisters that come to these great conferences that speak the truth into us. And so we have to be open to receive that. So it's about love, man. It's all about love. And you can't start it like a car and you can't stop it with the gun, right? Um, everything we do, Dr. Watkins, is so that somebody will love us. Do you understand that everything we do is so that somebody will love us? The successes that we have, the clothes that we wear, the cars, is so that somebody will love us, man. It's all about love. And I love you for saying it. Well, I love you too, brother. And everybody else in here, I can tell they love you. Uh, everybody, uh, please um, uh, tell Dr. Frazier you love him. Let him know you love him in the chat. Uh, and also, please thank him. Give him a, a warm digital round of applause for 
uh, gracing us with his time and all his wisdom and knowledge and everything else. Uh, please do that uh, because we, we got to really uphold our heroes and um, and your children should know about Dr. Frazier. Uh, they should know about him before they know about any of these other heroes that they get taught about in school. These are our heroes. These are our people. These are the ones that we uh, exalt and elevate. And also, uh, don't forget that key lesson he shared earlier. Learn, earn and return. I like that a lot. By the way, Dr. Frazier, I, I was taking notes while you were talking, by the way. That's when I'm writing down things down. Uh, I love that L-E-R. We're going to start using that L-E-R. Learn, earn and return. That means you learn. You go get your, you find your success and you bring it back home. That's what the Chinese did to become the strongest economic force on the planet. They started you know, pushing their own people to bring it back home to China. What are you doing for China? Doesn't matter what you're doing over there. What matters is what you're doing back in, back at home. So let's start taking that mindset on and uh, practice, you know, some strength in our community. We can do it. That's right. I call it, I call it, put one final thought. I call it the LTQ, the litmus test question that every black people every black person must ask themselves every single day in their life is mm -hmm. it take you the litmus test question and you do it in the quiet of your own mind and the question is this is what i'm about to do good for my people now i know it may be good for you but is it good for your people mm -hmm. and you measure that which you're about to do, or even say, perhaps, on occasion, is it good for Black people? If it's good for Black people, do it, right? And you know what's good, you right? We know right from wrong. We know it. We feel it. It's programmed into us. You know when it's good. We don't have to tell you, right? All right. Yeah. The LTQ, litmus test question. The next thing you do, is it good for Black people? So uh, let's keep that in mind, everybody. And uh, one more time, uh, give a thank you to our special guest, Dr. George C. Frazier. Let me lay out his books for you real quick and his website so you can jot this down, share this with your family. Uh, his website is Powernomics, oh, excuse me, sorry, Power, uh, Powernomics, sorry, PowerNetworkingConference.com, PowerNetworkingConference.com. That is uh, where you can find out more about the Power Networking Conference. There'll be another one in 2020. I'll be there. If you see me, run up to me. I, I'll give you a hug. Uh, also, he's going to be at the All Black National Convention next month. Uh, that's going to be in Houston. Uh, get your tickets now. We probably won't have any at the door. We're almost sold out, to be honest with you. AllBlackNationalConvention.com. Uh, also, his book is Success Runs in Our Race. That's one of his books. Uh, that is a very popular book. It sells 40,000 copies a year to this day for the last 25 years. Uh, it is the networking Bible for anybody that wants to form good relationships. That's how you do business. Get people to like you, be helpful to others, and they will want to help you back. Uh, last one is click 10 truths for building extraordinary relationships. This applies <clears throat> not just for business, but friendships, family, marriage, everything else. And I'm telling you guys from I put it on everything that I love, you know, that that the ability to form good relationships and, and being a good person and being helpful to others is one of the keys to being successful in business. Uh, no matter how much you know, if you don't know how to treat people and don't know how to get along with people, it's going to be hard to build off that. So please hit the thumbs up button. And uh, thank you again, Dr. Frazier. Uh, once again, I appreciate everything, my friend. Appreciate you, man. Keep doing God's work. And uh, hopefully I'll see you next month, man. Appreciate yeah, it. yeah. I wish I was out there playing golf with Jim Hilton here. <laughs> All right. Have fun, have fun, brother. Good to see you. All right. All right. <laughs>